Hey First Family, I'm Paige Salas, and if you don't know by now, I'm the children's pastor here at First Assembly. I'm so excited to be able to share this week something that God has done in my life uh, in the past few days, and also something um, pretty personal to myself that I don't um, typically uh, share. But I really feel like God is pushing me and encouraging me to share this as my devotion for this week. And so, uh, if you know me, you know that my brother, Jeremy, passed away in August of 2019. And I did not realize how much his death impacted my heart <laughs> and impacted me spiritually. But it sent me on a journey that I found myself in months later, wondering why I haven't went to his gravesite to see his um, tombstone that was uh, put there after we laid him to rest. And I found myself not wanting to watch emotional movies so that I didn't have to, I guess, bring up any emotions that I was pushing down uh, within myself. And I found myself in a spiritual place that I'd never been before since I began my walk with Christ um, about eight years ago. I found myself I wanted to say mad at God, but mad at God wasn't right because I wasn't mad. I was annoyed. And for some people watching, you might think, wow, you're a pastor. You're not supposed to be annoyed with God. And who gets annoyed with God? But that's where I found myself a few days ago, sitting on my couch, not wanting to read the Word of God, not wanting to spend time in His presence, because I was annoyed. I had been through something in my life at 25 years old I had never experienced. I had never experienced a loved one in my family that was young passing away so suddenly. And I've been annoyed because if you go to our church or you are a part of our family or we're friends on Facebook, you have seen me share about my Uncle Chad and his battle with cancer. And I don't think I've ever prayed for someone more than I have prayed for my Uncle Chad in a healing to come into his life and to heal his body. And God hasn't done it yet. I'm not saying God can't because I serve a God who can, but he hasn't done it yet. And only God knows why. But I found myself annoyed with God. I lost a friend that um, I was very close to in high school. He went to sleep and, and didn't wake up. And then I just, my husband and I lost a youth pastor friend that was very, very close to us. And I'm trying not to get emotional. But this past year has been so hard and it's really taught me about grieving and how I deal with my emotions. And my emotions are linked to every aspect of my life, whether it's physical or spiritual. And I found myself a few days ago annoyed with God, not wanting to spend time with Him, not wanting to read His Word. And I knew that this had been going on for way too long in my walk with God. And so as I was sitting on my couch, scrolling through Facebook, my phone popped up the Bible app and said, a three-day devotional. Uh, do you want to do it? And I was like, no, not really. And I'm being very transparent today. I really didn't want to do it. For some reason, I didn't want to go anywhere spiritually because I felt if I went somewhere spiritually with God, God makes us open ourselves up and examine ourselves, And I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to. But I felt convicted because I still have the Holy Spirit convicting me for the past few months. So I opened up that Bible app and I began that Bible uh, plan, that devotion. And when I got to Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through um, 39 and I began to read, man, God just started breaking some walls down inside of me and he began to soften my heart and he revealed some amazing things to me that I'm going to share with you today. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 it says, 
Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean that we no longer have trouble or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. And something I just want to stop and say right there, and I hadn't shared with anybody, is that I've been experiencing some of the strongest anxiety that I ever have experienced of fear of death. Because I've thought, well, if I lose my dad, my world would be completely upside down. If I was to lose my mother, how would I go on? How would my life continue? I began to think about Canyon and Tony and just, it, it began to bring so much fear into my life of something I couldn't control, I can't control. And it became, began to overtake me. And when I read that, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, God was saying, Paige, why are you letting that control you? Stop. Because it goes on and says, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And in that moment, I just began to weep and to cry out to God. And I heard God say, I love you, my child. It was the most gentle, soft-spoken moment with God that I've ever had. And all he said was, I love you, my child, because he knew my heart was broken. My heart was hurting for people I've lost. And God knew that I needed to know that He loved me. And God knew what I'd been feeling, that anxiety that I'd been having, being scared, being worried. And in an instant, God took those thoughts, he took those things captive, and he said, you're letting the enemy have power over you, Paige. And in my word, and I fulfill my promises, God fulfills his promises. He says, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Goes on to say, no power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to encourage you today, if you are being held by bondage, if you feel like there's a weight on your chest and on your shoulders, that's called a burden, my friends. And God wants to lift that off of you. It took me months <laughs> to come to terms that I didn't want to go somewhere spiritually because I was scared of the emotional state, emotional state that it would bring me into. But on a Friday, when I was celebrating Jesus going to the cross, I sat on my couch and I said, God, I'm tired of feeling this way. God, I need you. I don't know any other way to overcome what I'm feeling, God. I need you. In those scriptures I began to read and I began to see promises that God's not only made to me, but he's made to you as a, as a follower of Christ. There is no power anywhere that can separate you from the love that God has for you. And it's revealed through Jesus Christ going to the cross to die for our sins so that we could have a true, authentic relationship with Jesus. And I hope that you don't look at me today and you say, well, you're a pastor. You should have it all together. Because pastors are humans. Pastors have emotions. And I want to be an example to you. Don't set an expectation on yourself that you have to be perfect when you're walking out your relationship with God. God says, if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. I love you and I wanna pray with you today and I hope that this encouraged someone out there 
And if you have a testimony like this, I encourage you to share it. Tag me. I would love to hear your testimony of how God has helped you overcome a weight or a burden that the enemy has been telling you a lie about. But God is here to set the captive free. And he is the truth. He is the way and he is the light. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I love you, God. I praise you, Lord, for who you are. God, you are so good. Lord, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I ask that you just forgive me, Lord, for the time, God, where I was turning my back, Lord, on being in your presence, Lord, and being in your word. Lord, I just ask that you just forgive me, God. Lord, I thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you have for me, Lord. I thank you for the eternal life that you have given me, Father. Lord, you are so good. And God, I pray for anyone, God, who is going through the same thing, God, of being held down by a burden, Lord, that they would realize today, Lord, that they don't have to carry the weight on their own, Lord, that we are to give and cast our burdens upon you, Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for your death, and I thank you for your resurrection, Lord, that I get to walk in victory every day of my life because of what you did for me and everyone that you love, God. You are good. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And I hope that y'all have a great rest of your week, and thank you for tuning in to today's devotion. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.